Welcome back to the Conservative Lion. I wanted to do this video about Kyle Rittenhouse and the current backlash that uh, just took place down in uh, Conroe, Texas, which is, I think it's north of Houston. It's a suburb in Montgomery County. Yes, yeah, north of Houston. And there was this bar, this brewery, that was supposed to host an event that featured Kyle Rittenhouse. It was an anti-censorship rally or whatever. And due to pressure from, you know, the mob, of course, they folded and said they were a pro-police, pro-freedom of speech, pro-this, pro-that organization. But we know how powerful the mob is. And, and uh, you know, it is a private business. So Kyle Rittenhouse was not um you know guaranteed to have uh, a venue to support him and his cause but nonetheless i posed the question what if kyle rittenhouse was a white liberal what if when he shot those three people two of them fatally what if this was just a regular white on white crime because it technically was a white on white crime and usually the media does not go into a frenzy over white on white crimes but because of the circumstances surrounding this shooting we all know how the media covered the story i don't have to go into all that we know that the left melted down when he was found not guilty that was the right decision he did act in self-defense i do believe that kyle rittenhouse was probably in the wrong place at the wrong time but you know it's neither here nor there time only goes forward not backwards so I just wanted to go over a couple of things, um, you know, related to the title of my video. What if Kyle Rittenhouse was a white liberal? What if this was just a regular dispute between two white people at an event or during a circumstance where it didn't have a um, highly political um, atmosphere surrounding it? Because we know that the whole situation in Kenosha where they were burning buildings down and looting and rioting was a response to the shooting of Jacob Blake. As we know, Jacob Blake was a black man. He was shot by the um, Kenosha, Wisconsin Police Department because he would not comply with the officers. I think he was reaching for a knife or something like that. And he was shot seven times. Now, I'm not upset that he got shot I do think seven times was a little bit excessive. He got paralyzed. It was, either, it was either seven or eight shots, but he got shot multiple times in the back. He is paralyzed, but Jacob Blake is responsible for him getting shot. And on top of that, uh, the, the female who called the police on him in the first place is the mother of some of his children. Maybe all of them. I don't know. I think he has like five or six kids, but the female who uh, called the police on him called the police because he was over there and she actually had a restraining order on him and they actually had a warrant out for his arrest. So back to my original question, what if Kyle Rittenhouse was a white liberal? As you see on the screen, these are the four students that were brutally murdered up in Idaho recently, as we all know. This was a white on white crime. White on white crime happens all the time. Murders, you know, sexual assault, you name it. Um, and the media, They'll cover the story if it's a, a, a you know relevant story to them, or if they have uh, something to gain from the story, such as ratings. This is another family that the husband killed the, the family up in North Carolina. Uh, and and I'm, I'm bringing these cases to light because it wasn't about Kyle Rittenhouse shooting those three people. It was about the fact that Kyle Rittenhouse identified with the right and Kyle Rittenhouse killed two people that were on their side and that's why they were so upset how dare this 17 year old guy who had no business being in Kenosha in the first place who wasn't even a resident of Kenosha you know they always they, they kept trying to bring up the fact that he wasn't even a resident of Kenosha he drove across state lines they kept saying even though Kenosha is very close to the part of Illinois where he was living, for those of you that are from the Midwest or are familiar with the Midwest, Chicago and Kenosha are like a 
30, 45 minute drive away from each other. I've never been to Kenosha. I've never even been to Wisconsin, but I've been to Chicago. And I know that Chicago suburbs stretch north into southern Wisconsin. I think one of the biggest Wisconsin suburbs of Chicago is called Racine, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, <clears throat> this is a assault. This was a assault on the left by a right winger with the AR-15. And, and to make matters worse, he used an AR-15. You know the left hates AR-15s for some reason. So that is why this backlash against Kyle Rittenhouse will be permanent because he took down two people that were on their side. They were at a Black Lives Matter riot. Uh, the two people that he murdered were white liberals. And he's a right winger. And what's going on right now in this country is there is a war going on between the white liberal and the white conservatives. It's been going on for a long time. And the white liberals like to use black people and Hispanic people and gay people and everybody else that's not a white conservative to fight against the white conservative when it comes to political uh, elections and maintaining and gaining political power. So, yeah, the blacks, Hispanics, uh, white liberals, etc., um, are all used to, you know, kind of serve as like a proxy. It's a, it's a proxy war between a white conservative and a white liberal. And these um, useful idiots are pawns in a much bigger game. So, <clears throat> Kyle Rittenhouse is going to permanently have a target on his back in this country. The younger generation of white liberals, his white liberal peers, will not let this country forget what he did. And as far as I'm concerned, Kyle Rittenhouse was taken out the trash when he killed those two people and shot the third guy. I think he blew off a part of his arm with an AR-15. And Kyle Rittenhouse was a pretty good shot because I think he was falling down when he shot at least one of them. But... The guy who he killed, one of the guys he killed, his name was Joseph Rosenbaum. He was actually a convicted child rapist. <clears throat> he assaulted a young boy. He sodomized a young boy. I'm pretty sure y'all know what sodomized means. It's a pretty disgusting act. And in my opinion, uh, the time he served wasn't enough. He should have got at least 25 to 30 years. To put your grown uh, equipment inside of a child, you really deserve to be castrated. But that's another conversation for another day. We're, we're too soft on uh, certain criminals in this country. If we were like Saudi Arabia and other countries in the Middle East where we executed people for committing certain crimes or chopped hands and, and body parts off, I promise you the crime rate would plummet overnight. So that's my summation of what's going on with Kyle Rittenhouse. He had backlash at uh, some school in Arizona. I think it was Arizona State or uh, University of Arizona. I think a couple years ago, he was trying to enroll at a school in Arizona and there was a bunch of backlash. So he's got a target on his back. It's not going to stop. Any chance the mob gets to attack him, they're going to attack him. Um, he attacked the left by killing those two people. And uh, in our minds, he took out the trash. He did what he's supposed to do. He defended himself with lethal force. But to them, he really, really, really incited um, a lot of anger. And he's going to continue to deal with this, unfortunately, for a while. So... I guess uh, we need to continue to build the parallel economy and uh, have businesses that have the balls to support people uh, who are good Americans. Like I said, I believe that Kyle Rittenhouse probably should not have been there, but what's done can't be undone. Time only travels forward, not backwards. I'm pretty sure Kyle Rittenhouse would go back in time and take it all away if he could because I don't think that the backlash he's going to receive for the rest of his life is going to be worth it but he did defend himself 
a lot of people on the right support him, rightfully so. And uh, moving forward, he'll just have to navigate through society the best he can and uh, stay away from Black Lives Matter riots. And little do those people know that we're doing all that rioting and looting in Kenosha. Jacob Blake had a warrant out for his arrest. His baby mama caught the police on him. And he had a prior restraining order on him for allegedly committing sexual assault against her. Now, the charges of sexual assault have been dropped as a result of the um, shooting by the officer that was part of the uh, plea deal. Um, Jacob Blake, back in 2020, I think earlier in 2020 sometime, he went over to the house of his baby mother. And I don't know if they were still being intimate or not, but he obviously felt entitled to do something very sexually inappropriate to her he basically stuck one of his fingers inside of her vagina smelled his fingers and said it smells like you've been with other men and that was the uh incident that made him get charged with sexual assault because she reported it and even if he was actively having sex with her at the time I don't think it was appropriate for him to go over her house at like six in the morning and stuff, shove his fingers up her twat. But anyway, Jacob Blake was no angel in this whole situation with Kyle Rittenhouse and the riots and the burning of Kenosha and all that would have never been to the level it was if people weren't whipped into a frenzy by the media. So Kyle Rittenhouse, keep your head up. Uh, stay away from riots, lay low, and just keep your head on the swivel because you, sir, have made a lot of enemies on that side of the aisle. But we got your back on this side. Uh, keep your head up. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one.